again, good evening folks, or if you're not watching this uh, at seven o'clock, then whenever it is that you happen to be watching this, uh, my name is George Sinclair, uh, Senior Pastor of Church of the Messiah in Ottawa, and we're going through the book of Revelation. And uh, tonight uh, we're going to look at uh, uh, Revelation chapter seven, the first few verses. And uh, as you're going to see in a moment, we're going to look at it twice, uh, this devotional and the next devotional. And uh, one of the things that my wife and I had been married for many years before we discovered this about each of us, um, I'm a numbers person. I just like numbers. <laughs> Math was my best subject all the way through school and even in university, I was very good at statistics. And, um, and anyway, so one of the things, I, if, if I was in a conversation with you and you happened to just mention something about how you graduated from high school in a certain year, um, or you started, uh, or you, you started university in a certain year or graduated, I would almost, without even thinking about it, I would calculate when you were born. I would just sort of do it, almost without even thinking about it. And think, oh, that person was born in whatever year. My wife and I had been married, I mean, we, might have, we were married decades, and one day it came up in conversation, because I just assumed everybody did that. And she said to me, I've never done it once in my entire life. It never even entered into her mind that she would do something like that. So, so some of us are really into numbers. Some of us aren't into numbers. We're all different. Um, I, I mentioned, you're going to see why I mentioned this in a moment. So let's read Revelation 7. Uh, we're going to read verses 1 to 8. And then we're going to go back and, and look at a couple of important things in terms of understanding the whole book of Revelation. Here's how it goes. The sixth seal, the sixth seal has been opened, okay? After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth, that no wind might blow on the earth or sea or against any tree. Then I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun with the seal of the living God, and he called with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm earth and sea, saying, do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of the sealed, 144,000, sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. 12,000 from the tribe of Judah were sealed, 12,000 from the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 from the tribe of Gad, 12,000 from the tribe of Asher, 12,000 from the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000 from the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000 from the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 from the tribe of Levi, 12,000 from the tribe of Issachar, 12,000 from the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 from the tribe of Joseph, 12,000 from the tribe of Benjamin were sealed. And this is the word of the Lord. Here's a couple of things. Now here's, the, here's a really important question to, uh, that you need to ask yourself when you're reading the book of Revelation. Uh, are the numbers in the book of Revelation numeric or symbolic? Uh, making this decision, and it's, by the way, it's not just up to you to think, it's not up to you to say, I'm just going to say they're numeric, or I just want them to be symbolic. No, you have to look at the book at the end of the day. Uh, we want to look at the book and try to figure out from the book whether the numbers are basically meant to be numeric, or are they meant to be symbolic. Uh, I should just mention that sometimes if you read uh, people who are going through the book of, uh, of Revelation is what they do is they, and I hope I'm not insulting anybody, but they cheat. <laughs> when it's convenient for what they want to say, it's numeric. And when it's convenient for what they want to say, it's symbolic. Uh, if it fits into their system of eschatology that it needs to be numeric, it'll be numeric. If it gets around some theological problem or, or something else, it, it will be symbolic. And that is sort of cheating. There needs to be, a, like, in a sense, a literary reason, a reason from within the text of Scripture itself for you to determine uh, whether you should be moving from one to the other. But fundamentally, uh, in the book of Revelation as a whole, you have to ask yourself this question. What is it that they generally, in fact, maybe always are? I think, in fact, uh, in my view, uh, the numbers should almost always be understood as symbolic numbers. Now, this isn't to say that it might be that when the, the last day finally comes and it, it comes down to there being, you know, the, the two prophets or somebody who speak and that actually there are two. I mean, and that, in fact, even that number two is a bit of a break from the symbolic type of pattern, that that might be an indication it's referring to two particular people. It doesn't mean that the 
symbolic numbers might sometimes also be numeric. It's a matter of trying to figure out what the num numbers normally are. And I think if you look throughout the book, you'll see that generally the book is meant to be, uh, that the book generally intends you, because it's a very symbolic book to begin with. It's not like reading the gospel, which is history. It's not like reading Romans, which is very, very clearly something like systematic theology or Hebrews, which is both uh, something like systematic theology and also maybe a sermon. Uh, this number is symbolic from beginning to end. And uh, I mean, the book of Revelation is symbolic from beginning to end. And, and the way to refer to the Holy Spirit is, is to refer to seven spirits. And the way to refer to all of the churches is the seven lampstands or the seven lamps. And even the fact that there are seven churches, obviously seven is a number of completion. It's meant to be, I think, symbolic. And that sort of means here as well, if you look at it, uh, there's 144,000, there's 12 times 1,000, and there's 12 twelves here. But if you go back, we didn't look at it, but if you go back, what happens immediately after this, uh, they see a multitude that can't be counted, uh, which to my mind suggests that even this is yet another case of it being symbolic. A thousand is a very, very, very important type of number or unit throughout the entire Old Testament. Uh, and 12 it has an obvious set of uh, symbolism connected to it. There were 12 tribes of Israel, there were 12 apostles. Uh, and so there's an obvious sense that if you have 12 groups of 12 and all of them are thousands and there's a military imagery, etc., with it, I think what you're looking at primarily is a symbolic use of numbers. Now, some of you might say, okay, George, uh, that's an interesting thing. Uh, but I don't know if you're consistent as well. What about angels? Are the angels symbolic? It's a very, very good question. The answer is no. Uh, and the reason the answer is no is that the existence and the reality of angels is taught all the way through the Bible. Uh, the angel of the Lord is found in the book of Genesis. And the very last book, uh, angels are present at the birth of Jesus uh, and after his temptation. And uh, angels are present in the book of Revelation. And uh, in fact, that's one of the reasons why you wouldn't take them as symbolic of an angel. The story here, the angels here aren't symbolic of, you know, some type of an archetype or uh, a metaphor for your higher power or anything like that. No, uh, angels, just because the book has lots of symbolism doesn't mean that everything in it is symbolic. Um, and angels are real. In fact, actually, this book tells you a lot of things about uh, angels. First of all, it tells us that all human beings walk amidst unseen beings that can affect you and me in the physical and uh, mental world. Uh, this book is filled with angels. And in fact, it's an important thing to communicate to us. I mean, we have a culture which is uh, overwhelmingly secular. Everything in our culture promotes us to have, in a sense, a naked view of the world. That in the world, there's animal, there's vegetable, there's mineral, there's uh, forces like electricity, uh, and then there's human beings, but that's it. There's nothing else. Uh, it's, in a sense, a type of naked world. But the Bible portrays a very, very different world, that the real world isn't the world that is portrayed um, by universities and by the Supreme Court and the government of Canada. The real world is a world where there are angels and demons, and that in a sense, as you are sitting here in your room, or as I am right here, as you go to the store, as you go for a walk, that in fact there are unseen beings uh, that are around us. And these unseen beings, you can see this in the story, they have the power to harm. Uh, these angels have the power to harm. They have the power to hold back the wind. And that's in fact a consistent teaching of the Bible, that angels in fact uh, can have an impact on physical processes as well as mental processes. And, um, and so uh, it's really that one of the things which is so wonderful about the book of Revelation is it opens our mind to understand and see the world in a very, very different way. And um, angels, as we see here, an angel by definition, uh, a demon can make you think it's an angel, uh, but an angel, a true angel, is always those that are in complete and utter peace and harmony with the triune God and are under the authority of Jesus and point to Jesus. Any spiritual presence or being that isn't doing those things uh, is in fact a demon, uh, not an angel. And we see here that the angels seal 
those who belong to Jesus. And uh, I think that's like verse four or something, that do not harm, uh, verse three, do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the servants of our God on their forehead. The sealing, uh, it would have been done by a king with a big, big ring. It would have been done on wax or some other type of thing to make an impression. And the importance of sealing is that it both authenticates um, the message and the messenger and it marks ownership. And it cannot be removed by anybody other than the king. So this is a very, very important idea. When you give your life to Jesus, when you ask Jesus to be your savior and your Lord, and Jesus comes in to live within you and you in a sense are also in Jesus, at the same time, you are sealed by the almighty God, the triune God himself, on your forehead and you're sealed and it means that you are authenticated as it's an authentic thing you you are you belong to God it's authenticated by God himself and no one other than God can take it away from you and if you think about it for a second it's a very very interesting analogy right uh, it means that the Lord's seal is invisible to the visible world and visible to the invisible world that's sort of a cool idea. Like to the visible world, I mean, I can't see whether you are sealed on the forehead by the living God, and you can't see that in me. But to the angels and demons, they can see it. <laughs> and it's, so this seal which is invisible to the visible world is in fact visible to the invisible world. It's one of the reasons why demons don't like you if you are a Christian. <laughs> But more importantly, uh, it doesn't really matter whether they like you or don't like you. The fact of the matter is, is that there is one God. He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And there is no, it's not as if there's demons on one side and God on the other side, and there's a bit of a struggle. God is the creator of all things. And by that, he can do whatever he wants. And what matters most is that you put your faith and trust in Jesus and you are sealed by him. Let's pray. Uh, Father, uh, Help us to not be such a, so materialistic, so to speak, in the sense of only thinking that there are the things that we can see and touch and hear and feel, that that, all, that is all there is to the world. Uh, Father, don't help us to be overly afraid of demons. Help us to be mindful of them. And we thank you that there are angels that are your servants, uh, that they are used by you to watch over us and to help protect us spiritually and sometimes physically as well. And most of all, Father, we thank you that when we put our faith and trust in Jesus, you seal us yourself on our forehead, uh, that, uh, that you own us now, and nobody can take that away. Father, thank you for this. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. Mm -hmm.